the same way you get recipes don't just you know take them and not use them you know food is there to be enjoyed and have fun with and experiment and put your own wee twist in them you know there was a a lady asked me a very good question about the tin foil uh, when you put it in the you put the tin foil and the reason why we do that is because it actually speeds up the cooking process but we do take the tin foil off to get a lovely color and then what we do in the restaurant is we put thank you uh, we put the john we put um, cheese on it and gratinate it underneath the the grill is that okay but that's a really good question so thanks to that lady there and you know it's the same when you're roasting a chicken or roasting any meat if the, the shiny side reflects the heat it was a chef who actually told me that i didn't realize that so i'm trying to share little tips that people have taught me over the years same with the little green and the garlic you know you never stop learning about food and about produce that's what makes it so exciting and you know and it's you're learning all the time that's what i love okay but we're moving on to our dessert this is the last dish for the demonstration and um this is a it's a panna cotta and what panna cotta really means is a set Italian cream. So we're using buttermilk, I'm gonna talk about it in a minute. First thing we're gonna show you is how to poach fruits. So we're gonna poach them in some red wine and creme de cassis. And I said that I'd speak about red wine earlier on. You know, people want to know, do you cook with a good red wine, a bad red wine, what do you cook with? Cook with something that you enjoy drinking. You know, if it's not good enough to drink with, it's not good enough to cook with. It doesn't mean it's expensive. This one here is just a nice chili and it's nice and fruity. Costs about eight euro in the restaurant. It's not an expensive wine and it's great for cooking with. It's really, this is a real beautiful wine that we get from a company in Dublin called the Corkscrew. Superb, really good. Um, so there's lots, we, we are kind of spoiled for choice now with wine, you know, and everyone, like what I might like, you may not like and vice versa. So it's really to your own taste. Never cook with an expensive wine. This is Creme de Cassis. And this is used in Kiraal. Kiraal is usually Prosecco or sparkling wine or champagne with creme de cassis. I love this. This is fabulous when you're cooking any rhubarb or anything like that, even in a crumble, a wee drizzle of this. So this is a big bottle. You can buy small bottles of it, you know, because these are expensive. They're probably about 15, 20 euro to buy that. So if you don't want to use the creme de cassis, that's fine. You can just poach them in red wine. So that goes in there. And this is a blackcurrant liqueur, everyone. Okay? Or you can get creme de frambrose, which is a which is a, a raspberry liqueur. In goes the sugar, all right, caster sugar. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in our aromatic kind of spices, our flavorings. So we're gonna put in, first of all, some vanilla. One of my favorite spices, I love vanilla. So I do, absolutely adore it. So we have vanilla and we also have some ginger. And we're gonna just talk through the process of using the ginger. So two little cinnamon sticks, that goes in there. One star anise. And star anise is like an aniseed flavor. This is gorgeous with roast duck, roast pork, really beautiful. Uh, you know when you make fresh fruit salad, when you boil up the sugar and water, one or two of them and it is gorgeous. Also for breakfast we serve poached apricots, dried apricots, poached with cinnamon stick, vanilla skin, and I'll explain why in a minute, and also some star anise, serve it with yogurt. Fantastic, beautiful. So that's the star anise, just one of those go in there. You'll get them in any good health food shop, good delicatessen supermarket. And them are vanilla. So just with the knife, we just split it down the center, okay? And then we're gonna scrape out all these beautiful seeds. So that's what we're doing, just split the vanilla, scrape out all those, look at that beautiful seed. So that goes in there, into your red wine, and also into the star anise and the cinnamon. Now, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna, you can grate or I'm just gonna chop a little bit of ginger. So a good tip for you when you're using ginger is uh, peel the ginger, wrap it in cling film and freeze it. And take it out from the freezer when you're doing a stir fry or anything like that, or you're doing maybe like a chicken kebab, something like that. Ginger is fantastic and it's really good for your throat and also for digestion. We make a tea in the restaurant. <clears throat> and what we do is we get ginger like this and we chop it with the skin on. And what we do is put that into a little teapot. We have lovely little glass teapots, but a regular teapot at home. One stick of lemongrass, chop that. And then on the side, we serve some honey. We get honey from a company in um, Kilkenny, Malivan honey, really good. And then what you do is pour the boiling water over the ginger, lemongrass, serve the honey so the customer can add it to themselves. People love it, fantastic for your throat. It's, ginger is so good for you, really is fantastic. But don't peel it. It was something I saw last year in uh, South Africa and I thought it was really interesting. We serve it in the restaurant and they absolutely love it, they really do. So you bring this to the boil, everyone. All right, we're gonna let this cook probably for about maybe, take about maybe eight to 10 minutes. All right, so we have the other half of the vanilla podge, which we will use, and then we'll make the panna cotta in a moment. But there's one thing that I forgot to talk about, and I said that I would, is about knives. I'm gonna quickly just give you just a very couple of quick tips on knives. So what you're looking for is a high carbon steel in a knife. Uh, the knives that I use is Wusthof, Dreisek, or FC Dick. They're all German. 
a, a knife is to feel good in your hand. So a good knife you'll pay for something like this about 50, 55 euro. You'll have it a lifetime, trust me, you will. So you're looking for the blade, look at the blade, it goes right into the handle. That's exactly what you want, so it's going right into the handle. It's a solid piece, and then just to sharpen it. So when, when you're buying a knife, all you need to buy to start off with, a chef's knife, a carving knife, and a small little vegetable knife. That's all you need, absolutely. There's no need for a bone and knife. You go down to Michael, he'll do all the boning for you. Or you go to a fishmonger if you need a fillet and knife. You know what I mean? You don't need that. So I'm just going to show you very quickly how to sharpen it. This is a steel that we use for sharpening. And the reason why I put the tea towel or a little dishcloth under it, because it can slip. You don't want that. So just, just when you get a little bit of practice, hold the knife at a 45 degrees angle. Go up and down the actual steel. And then when you get a little bit more confident, you'll work the knife away from you. Like that. And that will just keep the edge on it, and that's really important, so it is. So, um, it's a German one, Wustoff, Dreisecker, FC Dick. They're all excellent knives. You probably would have seen one global knives. They're a Japanese knife. Very light, lose their edge very, very quickly, but they're still a very good knife. So they are. But these are excellent, so they are. All right, everyone, we have our, um, our, our poaching syrup on there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just talk about the fruits, just for a moment. So this is like, a, it's kind of two recipes in one. We're going to poach the fruits. We're going to make our panna cotta, and I'm going to show you a very simple uh, butterscotch sauce. Is that okay? So in the bowl, we have blueberries. This is all Irish. And we have some amazing, amazing raspberries. Absolutely gorgeous. And these strawberries, which are stem-picked strawberries, made or grown by a producer just out to Mullen, just outside Dublin, Clark's Fruit. You may have seen them in the supermarkets. He's fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. And the beauty about this, he never touches the strawberry. So he holds it and he cuts it. They're all cut by hand. That's what stem picking means. I didn't realize this. So in goes our strawberries. And we'll just prepare this. The best strawberries I've ever tasted. He's 100 people picking strawberries in Stamullen. He's one of the best. Absolute gentleman. And has a great product. Raspberries are his, blueberries and blackberries. I didn't bring any blackberries with me. Now, I'm using fresh fruit, but you can use the frozen fruit. And there's nothing wrong with using the frozen fruit. You know the frozen forest mix? Absolutely fine. What I would do is defrost them. With all the liquid that comes out, put it into this syrup here and let that cook for about another further four or five minutes. All right, and then what you do is pour this onto the fruits. So I'm just going to give this a minute just before I move on, just for a moment. This is reducing. And what you're looking for is that you, you're going to get a really, nice, um, a really nice reduction. So you let this cook down. And this is beautiful when you're cooking plums and rhubarb. Fantastic like this. Cranberries, coming up to Christmas and that, you can make a lovely like poached cranberries, which works really well as a dessert and maybe a meringue relade, something like that. Beautiful. Get your fruits into the liquid. Okay. Give it a shake and then into the bowl. Now, that technique, everyone, is known as to macerate. Not to marinate, to macerate. And what that means is that you don't cook the fruits, but you actually slowly, slowly stew them. They keep their shape, they keep their texture, but they take in all the flavor. And if you can do this prop preferably a day or two before you're going to enjoy them. Oh, wow, you will have the most delicious fruits. These here with meringue, even on pancakes, you know, you can make a nice little um, fruit sundae with ice cream. So simple, so simple. Are we happy enough with that? Yeah. Okay, the ginger is optional. It gives really nice flavor. If you're going to use rhubarb or ginger, or excuse me, rhubarb or plums, what I would recommend you do is um, to have the, to have the, to cook them for about two or three minutes because they'll take a little bit longer to cook. Right, on to our panna cotta. This means set Italian cream, everyone. So first thing we're going to do is talk about the gel. Actually, before I do that, I'll get the, the cream and the buttermilk on. Now, traditionally, um, uh, panna cotta would be made just with cream, okay? But I find it very rich, very heavy. So that's why we've started putting in uh, buttermilk, coconut milk, or regular milk. So if you don't like buttermilk in this recipe, and trust me, it's worth making, it's delicious. What I would do is put in coconut milk, the same amount, or regular milk. So this is gelatin, everyone, leaf gelatin. And we're just gonna talk about this because a lot of people get nervous when they're using this. If you use too much, it oversets, and if you don't use enough. So in your um, recipe, it's giving you the equal quantity for powder gelatin. But more and more uh, delicatessen shops are actually selling this now. I couldn't tell you the last time I used powder gelatin. I'm going to be honest with you. Leaf gelatin is so easy, and I'm just going to show you the technique of using it. We just wrapped it in cling film. We buy boxes of this, and they'll probably come in about maybe a thousand leaves of gelatin. So that's the quantity we we be buying. So that's what it looks like. It's it's strange looking, isn't it? Quite brittle. Then what you do is get your four leaves, and you soak them in cold water. I have five there, so I'll just put that one away. 
So four leaves of gelatine into cold water. Break it in half. Now that's cold water that I have there, okay? We'll leave that for about five minutes and we'll come back to that. Into the uh, water, or excuse me, into the, the liquid here, which I have the buttermilk and the cream. We're gonna add in sugar. And we're also gonna add in, remember the other half of the vanilla pod? So we're not gonna waste any of that. Right, come on, scrape out all the seeds. Now, with the skin, that's what I talked about. Remember why I poached um, apricots for breakfast? Also, another thing we do for breakfast, and breakfast is one of the most important meals that we do in the restaurant. I love it, I love cooking it and the compliments we get, and we serve, um, we, serve we, do, we cook all our breakfast fresh, of course, it's got to be fresh, and we use the very best of dry cured bacon and sausages, but what we also do is porridge, Flavin's porridge. We cook it, we serve with Irish mist, honey and cream, just a wee drizzle on top. I know you're looking, look at that. I saw your face. <laughs> you were licking your lips. You want to see yourself. I love it. Um, and also what we do is we get prunes, maybe not as exciting, but good for you know what. Anyway, uh, prunes with Paris tea. Genuinely, we poach them with tea bags, genuinely. Pit of prunes, vanilla skin, a little bit of vanilla extract and also a couple of tea bags. Fantastic with yogurt. <laughs> I saw your face behind. <laughs> she went, that sounds awful, it's delicious. Yeah. It really is. And you know what you could do with them too? Put some yogurt over it and also some toasted granola. Really good, really good. Okay, everyone, this is what we call the scald. You warm it up, that's what we're doing. I'm gonna keep the skin because I'm gonna use that for my, um, for my butterscotch sauce. We're gonna bring this to the boil. You're going to be shocked how easy this is. This is absolutely so easy to make. Now, so we soaked our gelatin. These are the moulds. This is not a Daria mould, it's a pudding basin, everyone. It looks like a Daria mould, but it's a wee bit bigger. You can make these in a little white ramekin. You can make them in a little wine glass, martini glass, whatever. We make them in small little plastic moulds like this. So whatever kind of moulds, don't be too particular. You know, um, I've made half the recipe, by the way, half the recipe that I've given you there. So you can actually half it. Now, we all right, Olivia, yeah? Good girl. That's the gelatin. Just look at the way it is now. See that there, it's soft. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move it over here. Take this off the heat. Okay, that's good. And then we're gonna whisk in the gelatin. Now if you use a powder gelatin, roughly about 100 milliliters of boiling water, whisk that in and then whisk in your gelatin and add that into it then. But just look how easy this is. No. And that's it dissolved. There's no messing. Absolutely brilliant. Also, we get a lot of uh, vegetarians into the restaurant, and we use a lot of um, vegetarian gelatin called agar agar. Okay? And it sets it really well, but it's a, it's a pure uh, vegetarian gelatin. Really good product, actually. And it's something that a lot more chefs are using. So um, just go to the local um, health store or good supermarket, and they'll have it, no problem. So when you're filling this, everyone, no need to oil the moulds. You can do this in a ramekin or a glass if you can make these the night before. And you can fill them as much as you want or whatever like that. So we just have our little containers. But that's what a panna cotta is, it's so simple. Remember I said about coconut milk? You could put passion fruit seeds into it. You could put puree of strawberries, raspberries. I've eaten a balsamic panna cotta. Sounds weird, but it was lovely. It really was. <laughs> Who said that? Shut up. <laughs> that is funny. Okay, sorry. <laughs> oh God, you're good fun. Okay, so pour this on here. So we got five out of that. So the full mixture will make about 10. So maybe half the recipe is enough. It depends on the size of the mold. So literally what you do, let these cool down. Never put anything hot into the fridge. It brings the temperature up and things go sour. Uh, let them cool down, cover them in cling and them into the fridge. And then we're gonna be left with this. This is one of them here, that's we kept in the fridge. And I'm gonna show you how to unmold them. They're already set, so they are. These were made actually Monday, so they were. So they'll be, you can make them about maybe three days ahead. Probably no longer, to be honest with you. Your fruits, no problem. They'll keep for a week in your fridge. You know, so that's, that's a great um, one to have. Now, what I'm gonna do then is have a little bit of fun doing some sponge sugar. We're gonna make our sauce. We're gonna get our two people up that we had tasting up to interview them and cross-examination. Cross-examination, where are they? Come on, guys. Come on, and back up to us. Give them another round of applause. That's a fit to move. All right. Now. Okay. Now. Come on over to me. I don't fight. Now. Okay. So. 
your first name. I've had Marjorie. Marjorie. Mm Marjorie. -hmm. What did you get the food? Beautiful. What was your favourite? Uh, the pizza. The pizza? The pizza was lovely. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. did you, was it nice and light? It was, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. it was lovely. And what lovely. about the beef? Did you like that? Beautiful. beautiful. Oh, what about the gratin? Lovely. It was beautiful. Was, it was, it, was there enough garlic in it? Um, there was, yeah, and you could taste the you sweet taste potato it. on that. Good. And Isn't yeah. it nice? Yeah, lovely. Yeah. Yeah. People yeah. love that. When we serve that in yeah. the restaurant, they love the sweet potato. Yeah. Right, yeah. come on over and we have a go at this now. I'm going to show you. Okay. So, we have sugar water glucose. Now, you watch, you're next. Okay. <laughs> so you oil the ladle just once. Now Marjorie, you're going to have a go at this in a minute. Okay. Deep breaths, you're fine. Um, <laughs> now, the secret to this guy is to hold the spoon nice and high. One direction. And then in the opposite. <laughs> you okay? Did you hear that? You've seen this before, it's not impossible. <laughs> You're going to make it possible, I tell you. See the way I'm going round? Yeah. That's the way we do it. Finish off the basket. Sugar, water, glucose. This is in your recipe, everyone. Okay, it's, it's called spun sugar curls. Then I'll break these off for you. Okay, Marjorie? Okay. And then you twist it, and voila. Oh. Isn't that magic? Now, Marjorie, I'll give you a hand. Okay, now. You let the sugar fall. I, uh, you left to right handed, sorry. Let me. Fantastic. Okay. Mm, one minute. Yeah, good girl. No, just a slow and down. Go. Hold it nice and high. Well done, yeah. Now, guys, what you can all smell is the garlic and the nutmeg. The potato is still in there in the first time. That's excellent. Over and back, yeah. Hold it nice and high. Perfect. Yeah, go around, lovely. Just go right down to the bottom. Don't let it catch, be careful, yeah, lovely. Wonderful, that's brilliant, that's really good. Now I'm gonna take that off you. Yeah? And then what you're gonna do is, oops, Daisy, give that a wee twist now. Good woman. Two books for me. Okay. Wow, hold on to that. Now, you stand over here. Okay, come on ahead. Come on, come on, come on. Now. Okay, come on. Now, your first name again. John. John, well, what did you think of the food? Excellent. Did you really like yeah, it? Yeah, the beef was good. Was it good? Mm. Tender? Yeah, four euros a kilo beef. It's cheap. <laughs> yeah, it's cheap. Mm. <laughs> a value <laughs> cut, sorry. Value, value cut, that's cut. right. Yeah, good. We don't, we don't say cheap. It is. No, and it shouldn't be cheap, sure it shouldn't. Did you like no, the pizza like and that. the no, mushroom? Sorry. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah, was yeah it? it was very nice. Yeah. Okay, yeah. fantastic. Are you ready to go with this? No. No, okay. <laughs> You got them? Good girl. Now, are you left or right handed? Right? Right. Right, okay. Now. <laughs> right, I'm going to let this fall. Either way, it's not going to be good. Okay, you grab it there, John. Good man. Away you go. Hold it nice and high. Good lad, yes. Perfect. Away you go. Hold it higher. The spoon higher. John, they're all experts in the holy <laughs> <scene. laughs> <laughs> Hold on. It's all Come on. No, no, here we go. That's fine, good lad. Hold on now. We'll let it fall. Go. Good man. Over the other way. Good man, just leave, Hi. leave alone. Hi. Yeah, yeah. Hi. Oh, Hello. yeah. Hi. They'll all be saying this at home. Hi. Over and back. That's it. That is pretty good. Isn't it good? I like it. Careful. Now, round she goes. Whoa! Oh. Oh no! No, that's lovely. What's that about? That's lovely. No, that's your Christmas present. That, that's unique. Now, you bring that with you, good lad. Here, well done. Come on. Do you have another go? The special boy. Do you have another go? Yeah, give me another go. Okay, come on ahead. I can do this. Okay, no, you can. Uh, okay, spoon again. Now. Okay. Okay, lovely. Great technique. That's it, yeah, over and back. So you only oil the ladle once. Sugar, water, glucose. When you cook it, it goes through different stages. The glucose will stop the sugar from going lumpy. Okay, now. That's right, yeah. Now what? Yeah, go around. Oh, That's great, keep going. Around. Okay, Good lad. That's fine, no problem. Now, that is what you call a one-off, a unique. Now, Stress. take it off, come on. Twist. 
Yep, twist, away she goes. Wow! Hold on. There's the boot, Pete. We'll sign it later. Thanks for coming up. I'll bring that with you. Come on, you can show everyone. Look at that. Now, be very careful. Well done, guys. Great sport. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Okay, two other types of sugar. Then I'm going to. Then I'm going to show you a quick butterscotch sauce and then we're going to serve up. Okay. So, this is what we call angel's hair, everyone. Let the sugar fall. As it's falling, it's cooling down. All right. Sugar, water, glucose. And the glucose, trust me, is important. We just use powdered glucose. Gem. A little packet it's called gem. Glucose. That's what we use. So that's there. That's our angel's hair. The first two types. Airtight container for three weeks. No problem. Will keep. Yep. Yep. Airtight. 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 If it's not airtight, if it's not airtight, probably by the time we're finished the demonstration, that will be dissolved. Okay? Now. So it's in your recipe booklet, everyone. It's called spun sugar curls. So the steel that we used for what? What do we use this for? Thank you. Well done. Okay. Break either end off. And very carefully slide it off. That for me is the most impressive. Look at that one. Now, we're going to do one more. And then what I'm going to do is get this on. And we're going to do our... our I'm going to show you, first of all, everyone... A caramel sauce and then we'll make a butterscotch sauce from that is that okay yeah all right Joe, would you like to see it yeah, cool we got we, we, we can do it then but I know it's getting late we still have to have a raffle but we'll try and be as quick as we can and the raffle hopefully you'll be lucky so it's all about practice even though we're having a bit of fun I have a scar on my hand from hot sugar so trust me guys this is really really hot isn't that beautiful look at that so look at that. how delicate is that all right so that's Sugar, water, glucose. Now, I'm going to take the spoon out, and you're going to see why I've done that. The only way you'll clean the spoon is put it back into the dirty saucepan and boil it. Put it in boiling water, or when it goes hard, smash it, but it goes everywhere. It's like a lollipop. Or you can just soak it just in water like that so you can. Now, so what we're going to do is make up our, um, our butterscotch sauce. So we need cream, first of all, for the caramel sauce. And then we're going to make it into a butterscotch sauce. All right, so just going to give this a little wipe, just this uh, whisk, and we'll just put it into the saucepan. So we just let this soften up, everyone. Just takes a minute. See, it's gone hard. Well, not hard, but, you know, it's firmed up, and that's what happens. So we add about, say, about approximately about a quarter pint of cream. If you don't want to use cream, you can make this with apple juice or orange juice. Try and get the best quality you can get. And coming up to Christmas, some cranberry juice is delicious in this. Really good. So keep whisking this, everyone. All right, let it fall, let it fall. That's brilliant. Yeah. Okay, in goes the cream. Olivia, do we have another jug? Ah, oh, you have it there, your star. Now, just watch what happens when I add the cream in, everyone. So first of all, if I had the spoon in there, the steam, you get a nasty little burn, but it goes lumpy. Can you see that there? So you gotta keep whisking it, everyone. We may need to reduce the heat slightly, and that's fine. And keep whisking. That's why I wanted to use the whisk. Okay, so look at, you're just dissolving one into the other. The cream is cold, the caramel is extremely hot. Now, keep whisking this. Turn it up again. And a tiny bit more cream. You can't use half milk, half cream for this, unfortunately, because what happens is that the milk splits and it'll curdle. So that's our caramel sauce, everyone. Is that all right? Now we're going to turn it into a butterscotch sauce. Tablespoon of butter. I know I heard that. Jesus Christ, I heard that. What did you say? I heard that. <laughs> I mean, like I have ears, you know. <laughs> Jesus. Did you hear? Jesus Christ, more bloody butter. Um, oh, you're a good fun. I like it. Okay. You do need the butter for the, for the butterscotch sauce. Okay, dash of um, rum. If you don't want to use rum, you can use whiskey. And I must just tell you a very quick story. Uh, two weeks, three weeks ago, we were down in Middleton at Jemison. And we'd done the whiskey tasting, really great, very strong brand. The most successful, uh, the most successful Irish whiskey, but the fastest selling um, spirit in the world. Isn't that amazing? In the world, guys. And um, do you know how many bottles 
I'm just going to put the skin of the vanilla in here. You know how many bottles of whiskey they lose a day through evaporation because they're, they're held in, in, in um, wood barrels, so it evaporates. 18, no, sorry, 20,000 bottles of whiskey a day. 8 million bottles of whiskey a year is evaporated. That is the truth. And you'll see that on the program. Can you believe that? It's called everyone a drink for the angels. Isn't that amazing? I can't believe that. Isn't that something? That is true. Yeah. For the lucky angels. So when you go in, everybody, they have enough whiskey stored for the next six years. Incredible. I mean, if they have, I, I couldn't tell you, I actually forget the amount of barrels. And you'll see it on the program. That was fabulous. Okay, everyone, that was a little extra recipe. That is beautiful with apple crumble, apple tart, ice cream on its own. Um, fantastic. Sticky toffee pudding. Yum. Absolutely gorgeous. Right, we're going to serve up our dessert. So we have our panna cotta, which I've showed you. You have some hot water. Thank you. And I'm going to show you the technique of unmolding it. It looks difficult, but it's not. So you get your little mold and you dip it into warm water. This is warm water, not boiling, warm water. Just leave it for about maybe 10 seconds. Or you can run the tap, it doesn't really matter. So then what you do is just lift it out and away she comes like that. Okay, now what you're looking for, can you all see that? Slight little wobble. If you use too much gelatin, and the beauty about this is to serve them at room temperature. Don't serve them straight from the fridge. Get them about maybe five, 10 minutes out of the fridge and you'll be, you'll be left with a really beautiful taste in panna cotta. They should be sweet, they should be light, and it should be very smooth. And the bit of um, buttermilk is just delicious. It really is so beautiful. So where on them goes our fruits. Now, gorgeous. So this is a healthy dessert because there's fruit in it, isn't that right? <laughs> now, I, normally I wouldn't do this, but because I have it, I'm just gonna drizzle this round here. Like if I pour this over the panna cotta, what's gonna happen? Melt, of course, yes, exactly. And then the last thing we're gonna do is our little basket. And normally I'd serve this with a scoop of ice cream or a bit of cream, maybe boat, and a, <laughs> a little bit of sugar. Now you'd never serve all three, but just for presentation. Now, what about that? Now, it's not a dessert and a half. Okay, so that's the last dish. I hope you've enjoyed it, have you? Yeah. Okay, I want to, um, thank you. I want to thank a few people. We're going to get Rosemary in now in a minute just to do the draw and the raffle. So I hope you're going to be lucky. But um, I have to say, I was very excited about coming down here and uh, I couldn't believe that they sold out two demos. And I want to just again thank uh, Michael and the whole team and his wife because they're, they're, they're the reason I'm here. And I hope when you're, I know you go to him, you shop local, but that's very, very important. And he's a great guy, very humble guy, very passionate guy. We wish him continued success. So on behalf of myself and all of you, let's show a huge appreciation to the Trumbies. Well done.